Joining us today, defenseman for your LA Kings, Matt Roy and Vladislav Gavrikov. I got to start off, guys. First of all, how are you doing, Matt? I'm good. How are you? How are you doing, Vladdy? Perfect morning. Can I call you, Vladdy? Yeah, right. perfect. And featuring Zach Dooley. How are you doing, Zach? Jesse, I'm doing great. Perfect. When we're talking to Todd McClellan, when fans talk about lines, we give them one, two, three, four, or we pick the center and we say the Kopitar line, the Deneau line. When it comes to D pairs, how are they? How are they referenced in the game or in the locker room? Uh, I mean, I think you have to put Dewey at the top uh, top pair there. Uh, him and Mikey, they get a lot of the ice time, but um, I don't know. I think me and Gav are right there behind them and ready for whatever's thrown at us. So if we're talking about the two of you as a pair, do we go alphabetically, Gavrikov and Roy, left to right, Gavrikov and Roy, numerically, Roy and Gavrikov? That's uh, your call. All right. <laughs> What's right. Jans, Jans usually doing, like Rosie Gavi? So he's starting with you. Well, me. There you yeah. Go. yeah. Rosie? Yeah. Rosie. 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 Oh, yeah, Rosie. Rosie. All right. Yeah. I like uh, Gavrikov. Your names Rosie. just intertwine really well. That could work. Yeah. <laughs> See if that catches on. Yeah. Just play around with it. So you guys have eerily similar careers. You're both born in 95, uh, March, November. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you so Gotta much. Got to get that right out of the <laughs> way you. first. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Both drafted in 2015, seventh round, sixth round. Uh, 181 non-NHL games after being drafted, 206 non-NHL games after being drafted. You both broke in in 2018-19. You both sort of secured a spot in 1920. You've got 87 points on 19 goals. You've got 88 points on 20 goals, 68 assists each, 300 NHL games for Roy, 295 games for Gavrikov, four points each in the playoffs. So who's better? That's why we're here, both of us. <laughs> it's like really, really similar, yeah. Yeah, to be honest. So is, do you find that your games are similar and complementary in that way? You're just a left-handed version of him and you're a right-handed version of him? I do, yeah. I think we have similar mindsets, and I feel like we play more defensive game first, but whenever we can jump in the offense, uh, I think we look to do, to do that. Feel the same way? Yeah, kind of. I mean, whatever, like uh, – especially team feel comfortable about us. That's like uh, perfect. Like we're, we're playing good together, I think. Sometimes like uh, bad things can happen anyhow on the ice. But other than that, like I feel pretty comfortable. Does that mean that Matt could take over the music duties after the game if he had to? I think so. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to know your role. Yeah, exactly. Not There's all it. different personalities. I got it. <laughs> So we had Blake Lazat and Carl Grundstrom in here recently, and they said that you control the music after the game and that there was no conversation, there was no debate. You had the best taste in the music, so you control the music. Is that... Not after a game. Like, I mean, just, like, game days before a game, probably, because, like, after a game, we do have just two songs, like, two our winning songs, um, and pretty much it. But, and like, be before a game, yes, pretty much, like, it's on me. P PLG started like doing that uh, just the last game because he told me he needed time to build uh, his playlist it took a uh, probably a couple months all right to uh, keep it all together you know it's still like probably 20 songs in that so it's not gonna good enough for the uh, rest of the season so i'll help him out he told us when we spoke to him that he's got a pretty eclectic taste in music is it how is, is he got a decent playlist is it all right who pl yeah no, I would say so, yeah. yeah. But we we have to look through the like few games, not just one. You sure. know, you you can pick like easily one of you. You can pick like pretty decent playlist for the one day, but how it's gonna be for like a month? That's a real. Do you question. rotate then? Do you have like different playlists? Uh, kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it does it change if you win if you're on a winning streak or losing streak? No, or, it doesn't matter. Okay, just try to keep it like consistent. All right, and it's decent. Yeah, it's good. All right, I got no complaints. All right, and not that you would complain. I can't not complain now. anyway. He's not going to say it now. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. So then we've seen the – we haven't heard the song. and Deneau told me he won't say the song, so I won't ask. But where does the dance come from? Dance? It's like randomly probably. But we started to do that uh, in Australia, though. That's okay. like – that's kind of where that came from. So uh found that it's like – was fun. Actually, the whole trip was like – different for us uh like as a preseason right and uh yeah we had so much fun on uh in australia there and that's that's kind of we found it there let's say that move was mm -hmm. founded there and it looks like everybody gets into it sorry that's like 
that's perfect i mean it's supposed to be like that to be honest and uh when uh, the team involved even like after after just like tough game and we won and we had like our like 30 seconds to like do that kind of celebration that's cool and especially now fans love it they're like watching it try to try to guess what song is that so it's like make makes it even more special either of you guys ever been to australia before that trip no no first time what was your favorite part <coughs> kangaroo kangaroo <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I went, I went golfing a couple of times, and golf courses were great. So that was probably my favorite part. I think the place you guys played is the host of the President's Cup in like twenty eight. Yeah, coming up there. So yeah, we played uh, Kingston Heath and uh, Royal Melbourne as well. So can't complain about those courses. Since we brought up Australia, I wasn't planning on asking this, but now I have to. Um, you're American. Peanut butter, right? Peanut butter and jelly. You probably had them a ton as a kid. Is peanut butter big in Russia at all? Not really, but I had, like, uh, when I grew up, I had a little. Yeah, but, like, as soon as you start playing hockey and, like, start traveling, uh, you'll see, like, a lot of peanut butter. Especially, like, we were to um, Subway Super Series, uh, Russia against Canada. So, like, let's say that was probably, for me, the first, like, biggest trip outside of, like, uh, Europe, even. And, uh, yeah, that was, like pretty special to try like some different food like from the different culture it's all, always been like um interesting for me you know like being in a new country and like try something something new so like in canada that was obviously big like before games it's peanut butter everywhere so yeah i've tried a couple times and pretty good be used with that so the scandinavians hate it so i had to ask carl how it compares to vegemite and he did not like Vegemite. I'm assuming you guys, you're shaking your head already. Yeah, I think I just smelled it, and I didn't even give it a chance. Yeah. Did you have any Vegemite? Yeah, we've tried. Me and Carl, we we had that. Well, that's uh, right on the Yeah, 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 that kind of, second, like, yeah. challenge or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to eat it all day long, you know. Like, uh, it's, again, it's always good to try, like, something mm -hmm. new. But, like, uh, Team Tom's was my favorite. Like, that, that candy's, holy, that yeah, was so good. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've brought it back home, like, a lot. Like, a lot. Let's pick on Canada for a second, then. Have you had Canadian Smarties? I've tried, yeah. And American Smarties? Yeah, they're the... Yeah. Yeah, low-rent M&Ms. But American Smarties are, like, a powdery... I don't even know how you describe them. Yeah. They're just, like, pure sugar. Yeah, the little yeah. plastic yeah. rolls, yeah. American yeah. Smarties are better, if we're just picking Smarties. And I just wanted to... Ooh. Just throwing that out there. I actually think I disagree. Really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, American Smarties are just like a sugar ball that you just put it's in. It's just a just... different, you almost can't even compare them. They're just. They're totally different things. Yeah. But Canadian Smarties are just a lie. But I'll take you M &Ms. think you're getting M&M's. <laughs> I'll take M&M's M &Ms over Smarties. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 Even knockoff M&M's. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll take those. All right, enough about food. Sorry, that was my, <laughs> that was my little diversion. Personal question. Yeah. I'll we'll um, take that. So just a real quick trivia question for you. How many mats have there been in the history of the LA Kings? Um... I don't know, forty. <laughs> a lot less, a lot less than that. I mean, it's a pretty common name, right? Yeah. When you were growing, every Matt I knew growing up went by their last name because there were too many for us to just keep. Right. Yeah. A lot of Matts out there. Did you grow up people calling you Roy or Roy? Um, I've had like a hundred different nicknames. So. Yeah. All right. Well, we won't go through all. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many Vladislav did you guys have? One. You see? I looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of one. Yeah, one of one. Uh, you're also the only one to wear number 84. Perfect. I was hoping to yeah. find something like that. But you're from Russia, you're from Michigan. Which has more former kings from that? For sure, it's supposed to be Michigan, no? I would say I would, Russia. I would, I would say, like, a lot of, yeah, like, a lot of Russians have been here. I'd say Russia. Probably, yeah. It's uh, Mich is it Michiganders? Is that what we call them? Yeah. Michiganders, eighteen to sixteen. Hmm. Mm. Russia. Well, okay. Pretty, pretty decent. Only one Vladislav. Only one number eighty-four. But you're from Yaroslavl. Mm -hmm. We've had a former player from Yaroslavl. Do you know who it is? Mm, um, gotta guess. Who burned in Yaroslavl? That's. Uh, Big question. No, you just got to tell. All right, it's yeah. Denis Grubeshkov. Oh yes, perfect. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and also Ivan Provorov, <laughs> who's not on the team, but we're paying part of his salary. Oh yeah, there you now, go. Oh yeah, <laughs> three of us. Strange little, perfect. Strange little comparison. Yeah. 
Uh, more trivia about you guys. Uh, do you remember who you scored your first NHL goal against? Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, Blues. Yeah, do you remember mm -hmm. the goalie? Um, Allen, Jake Allen. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Matt, how about you? Uh, I think it was Martin Jones in San Jose. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. Most guys don't remember yeah. that quickly. I, <laughs> I am impressed. I'm definitely impressed. Uh, Matt, do you know where you rank in games played by Kings defensemen all time? No clue. 22nd. With 307. Okay. You're Take two it. behind Aaron Miller and five behind Philippe Boucher. So Kopey's knocking down his records. You're knocking down yours. Yeah, I told Cope I'm coming after him. <laughs> <laughs> I have a thousand more. There you go. Um, so we've talked to the forwards about having four lines that they can roll and, and how nice it is not to have to worry about line matching. Is it similar with the D pairs? You know, you mentioned that uh, Anderson and Dowdy play a lot of minutes, but you guys do as well. Is it nice to not have to worry about line matchups to have – Trent Yanni be able to call any pair during a game and, and know that it'll be okay? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you mentioned us four and uh, England and Spenny. They've they've been great to us so far this year. Um, I think our pairs have kind of been jumbled up in some games where I've been playing with Engie and, uh, you know, Gavs with Spenny for a few shifts. So, uh, really, I think anyone can play against anybody and uh, I, I've been happy with our, our decor this year so far. Since I've been working with the team, that hasn't really been the case. It's been like set pairs pretty much every time out. Is that an adjustment at all in game when you might switch partnership to shift, or is it just something that everyone's comfortable with at this point? Uh, I think at this point we're all comfortable with it. You're just kind of rolling the dice, and uh, you're just kind of ready for whatever's thrown at you. And it's perfect for the team, again, like in a team-wise, if you start looking like you don't have to worry about who is going to be on the, on the ice next shift, who you got to play against. Any D can play with anyone, and it uh, doesn't matter who, like, which forward on the ice, which is, like, perfect. And, like, some uh, some of us can play, like, even on the left or right, so it uh, doesn't really matter. And it's helpful, like, um, on a, like, game management-wise. So, like, you, you can, like, kind of split the minutes between whoever left on the bench because like let's say some some of them we had like twice in this year 3d was on the penalty box <clears throat> which is like crazy and um yeah juice helped us out actually yeah, a couple of times, times. Yeah. Okay, who's the better partner gabby or juice <laughs> i took a ship last game it depends what zone we're in that. juice wasn't too bad actually juice no, was I, pretty decent i had a he, big hit last game a big all, hit yeah, yeah. when yeah. was i mean an open ice perfectly executed hip check were you giving him pointers oh my god that's insane <laughs> like even like uh, during intermission like do we do you said like i i was yelling just like good job dudes. <laughs> but that was like imagine like as a d if you haven't two on one on a power play like that's insane i would never try to hit anyone you gotta like shift back and like just let the forwards uh, try to back check the guys. Just just made it <laughs> clean hit on the open ice. <laughs> so yeah, that was probably unexpected. Unexpected. That's yeah. why uh, that was uh, so so good. But no, that's like insane. Did the fans, the Kings fans that were in the building, react? Could you hear the reaction in the building when he did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, he could. Yeah, it was a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to switch sides not with a different partner but with each other could you do it yeah, yeah. i i play right yeah for like a couple of years i would say so it shouldn't be a problem for me the reason i ask is that the i don't obviously work for any other team so i only hear what people say about our team everybody talks about the king's system as being very detailed very specific the language is unique you know if you come to the team there's a learning process is it really that specific and different from the way other teams run things that's that's where i had when i got here mm -hmm. to be honest so yeah it's like takes probably not a couple days like to learn every detail in the system probably like few weeks but yeah it was so hard to jump in and like get in the structure like doing the right things because i never played uh 131 before that that was my uh, first team we running that and uh yeah as you said like language is kind of specific like terms and stuff so it's like yeah take takes a while but now i feel like so comfortable like we like even like uh, on the practice we have like the drills with the specific names so the todd just like calling three like 
three phrase and we already know what's going to happen in the next like 30 minutes. Last one, I think. Matt, you were here before Todd McClellan was. So did you see that system being brought in and implemented piece by piece or was it sort of there before? No, it, when he came in, it was a completely new system. So we started from scratch and uh, had some bumps along the way, but I think the whole team's comfortable with it right now, and uh, I think you can see that on the ice. Well, the team is a ton of fun to watch off the ice, uh, on the ice, excuse me, and oh, also oh, off the ice. ice. <laughs> but no, but also That's off what we're the talking ice. about. And, now. Uh, you know, the locker room and everything. And it's been a lot of fun with you guys today. Appreciate you joining us. Yep. Thanks Thank for having us. Appreciate Thank it. You.